I served as our party's leader in the United States Senate. We worked together to fight global HIV AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis in Africa, but indeed around the world, in the most vulnerable communities in the globe today. During a time of conflict and, and terror, we launched a new kind of diplomacy, a diplomacy that's called soft diplomacy, or health diplomacy, or medical diplomacy. Health is that foundation for families and societies to thrive, to flourish, to engage in sustain sustainable economic development. It is the language that crosses all boundaries. Health is, as you'll hear me say again and again, a currency for peace that overpowers division, overpowers hatred. It's built on trust. Knowing all of this, after 9-11, we went to work and we established fundamentally new international programs that we'll talk about today, things like the Millennium Challenge uh, Corporation. And the good news is that they have worked and they are working. I'm very proud to say that it was a Republican president and a Republican-led ad administration in Congress that pushed forward, that proposed and implemented this really historic initiative in addressing the challenge of reconfiguring our foreign assistance programs but also addressing specific topics like malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS. The PEPFAR program, most of you know what PEPFAR is, but it's the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, was announced in 2003 in a surprise announcement at the State of the Union message on, I think it was January 23rd uh, of, of that year. And since that period of time, we've made great success, which we'll talk about today. Our support of another different initiative, the Global Fund, has helped treat 3.3 million people with tuberculosis. And American investments through the President's Malaria Initiative, a third uh, initiative, have already delivered over 6 million bed nets in the past two years. Good, positive, but we got a long way to go. An appropriate time to talk about that. Now we have a new administration, a new McCain administration coming in. David mentioned the One Campaign. We've had this initiative called One Vote 08. We've been working it for about a year. Our, our white armbands have been instrumental in setting a, 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 a platform whereby candidates, and indeed both Obama and McCain have come forward with strong platforms, have had to answer those basic questions around development in Africa, but also other parts of, of the world. Today is Global Health and Sustainable Economic Development. Our first panel. American leadership on global health, what we did, what's next. I'll introduce our panelists very quickly, their bios at your seats for a more extended introduction of, of the panelists. Sally Canfield, up uh, for us today, comes to us from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as the Senior Program Officer for U.S. Government Relations. Sally, thank you for being here uh, with us. Michael Gerson, sitting next to me, was Assistant to the President for Policy and Strategic Planning. Uh, speechwriter for the president, but most importantly, at least in my mind, he was in essence the driving force in the White House in the construction of really all three of these initiatives. We'll get in a little bit in terms of behind the scenes on, on that uh, shortly. Dr. Josh uh, Ruxin down at the end got in from Kigali, Rwanda, where he now lives with his uh, beautiful wife. Uh, is assistant clinical professor officially uh, at Columbia at the School of Public Health there, is involved in private public partnerships that empower local communities and local people in Rwanda uh, today. Uh, Dr. David Apuli, who is a close friend who I met in the Kampala, sitting in a, in a restaurant one day as we discussed the issues surrounding uh, Uga uh, Uganda, is director general of Uganda AIDS Commission involved in the development and overseeing vaccines, was a former Minister of Health, so he understands infrastructure throughout uh, uh, Uganda. Let's go uh, jump right in.